Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. I am Crystal O, and today I'm on here with my husband. What's up, guys? Good to be back. Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about some really hard stuff, um, some really controversial stuff. Um, you all may know, of course, if you are alive and are on earth right now. Um, there's so much happening just with racial injustice and just the different themes and different feelings that I feel we've kind of all been passing through. So uh, today we just wanted to tackle um, such a huge topic that's currently happening. We wanted to use our platform to share and just to kind of be a voice um, in this space. So um, today we're just basically going to be talking about um, race, healing, and faith, those three pieces. On my Instagram, I did ask you guys to submit your questions for what you wanted us to discuss today and what you wanted us to answer kind of to today, and we are going to do that in this video. We'll kind of give a brief overview of just kind of how we've been um, in light of all that's happened, and then we'll just kind of jump straight into those questions. So if you're not following us, go ahead and follow us on social media, and let's go ahead and get started. Right. All right, so as you all may know, of course, like I said before, um, there have been, you know, um, several killings, several murders that have made national news that have led to a almost, I want to say, global uh, racial pandemic, right? Where um, there's this crisis of, of black humans who are being killed unjustly and, you know, it started with Ahmaud Arbery, and then it became Breonna Taylor, and then it became George Floyd. And all of these deaths have hit me in one way or another, and I know I've wrestled through a lot in this process. I don't say this to say that I'm perfect or I have all the answers, but um, I have done a lot of wrestling, and it's been hard, y'all. Like, we're human. It hurts. It's difficult. These are tough things to kind of you know, work through. Um, so we're just going to touch on a couple of those things in this video as we're answering those questions. But that's kind of my overview of all of this. On some days, I'm like trying to balance myself between, you know, getting too bitter or getting too numb or getting too angry. I'm just trying to find that balance, that middle ground where I can still have reason, peace, justice-minded, hope, and a love for other people. So um, it's been a journey and daily, it's, it's a battle. So. But what would you, you know, say? I'll just add to that. Uh, you know, we are naturally people who should share. We try to be vulnerable, mm -hmm. we try to be honest, um, but we are also wanting to just help be mm -hmm. a, a, a resource for y'all. You know, I'm in ministry, she is in ministry as well, but she's also an, a, an, a therapist mm -hmm. and just has that insight as well. So as we, as we share honestly and we look at these questions, again, know that we're not like the know-it-alls. Right. We're processing th through stuff the mm -hmm. same way. We're feeling pain the same way, right. but we do hope to just help. Yeah, be encouraged. Help and encourage mm -hmm. people as we can. So. Right, yeah. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into these questions. You guys asked some pretty good questions. So obviously, if you don't have the answers, we'll just say we don't have the answers, right? Mm -hmm. um, we'll go ahead and answer about five or six, just because they are really in-depth questions that we'll need unpacking. So we'll go ahead and start with the first one. So the first question says, what if your white friends were silent? Also, how to performativity in your circle? So I'm guessing they meant how to address performativity mm -hmm. in your circle. Yeah. You I can go answer? ahead and yeah. Okay. And for those who don't know what performativity is, uh, performativity is basically what it the word says. Mm -hmm. It's a performance. It's doing things not out of a genuine desire to see right. lasting change in you and around you. It's performing so that you're validated socially right. around you that you did the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't really address the heart uh, and the root of right. what we're going for when we're looking for change mm -hmm. um, in our society. Yeah. So I would say when it comes, what was the first part of that question? What if your What if your friends, white friends were silent? Also, how to performativity in your circle? How to address performativity, mm -hmm. right. I think for me, um, when it comes to white people who are being silent on a thing, I think there's two camps. There's the camp that, man, maybe these really are your friends, maybe it's family, people that you're close to and that you have respect for and you, you want to keep that friendship 
but it really hurt you that they kept silent on an issue. Uh, just like any friendship and just like any issue or conflict that you have, I think you address that with that person. I think you let them know that, hey, your silence has had this impact on me, uh, not only as a person of color, but just someone who, who empathizes with what's going on in the world. And, and it hurts me that you're not. And, and there's two ways people can respond. They either may be like, wow, I had no clue. I had no idea. How do I support? How do I advocate? Help me to, to be that kind of person who can fight for these things. Mm -hmm. Or it's going to be like, well, that stuff doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And in that situation, that's a bit of a different situation. But I would say in that regard, it's kind of, um, for me, I always, mm -hmm. I, I always say like, just put that in your notebook, you know? Mm -hmm. Like just take note of that interaction mm -hmm. and and then ad adjust accordingly. You know, that doesn't mean throw, throw them completely away mm -hmm. and just cancel them because we live in a cancel culture and they cancel, block, unfriended, mm -hmm. you know. There is a place for that though. Right, right, you know? right. Right, I'm gonna get to that. But yeah. but again, if this is again someone who's a friend mm -hmm. and you want to remain in relationship with or friendship with or or family mm -hmm. then I do think you have to adjust accordingly and don't stop advocating don't let that discourage you from you using your voice and you using your platform to mm -hmm. fight for those things and hey God might change your heart you know right. I've had friends years later who I've talked to about these things come around and mm -hmm. repent to me and apologize to me because um, they just had that awakening right. um, so don't give up on people but also do what you have to do mm -hmm. to not like drive yourself crazy right and then lastly i'll just address this then there's the people who are like social media trolls please do not waste your energy mm -hmm. on social media trolls don't do it like mm -hmm. do not do it she can talk from the mental health mm -hmm. perspective it's not good for your mental health it ain't good for your spiritual health it ain't good for nothing mm -hmm. you know just don't waste the time going back and forth with people who clearly don't care about you, who mm -hmm. clearly don't care about the issues, who, who clearly don't care about black people, mm -hmm. people of color, or whatever. Don't go back and forth with those kind of people right. um, because it will take take from you. Yeah. And then the last thing on the performativity thing, um, how do you address performativity in your circle? Have that conversation. I always tell people, don't just don't just jump to doing. I know the natural reaction when you finally get something is like, oh, I'm going to fix it. Mm -hmm. Especially a lot of my white brothers and sisters, they, they get a, a revelation or they, they, they get this awakening. Mm -hmm. They're like, I'm going to fix what I do, what do I do. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, sit, lament, feel the pain, weep, mourn with those who mourn before you do. Mm -hmm. Because if you just start doing without the heart, it's actually going to end up being a vein and it's going to be short lived mm -hmm. almost all the time. Right. So. Talk to people if, if, if they, you do see those trends. Um, if you're in a business who's just doing performative things, have those mm -hmm. hard conversations with your, your higher ups right. and let them know like, hey, I, I just wanna make sure yeah. you really feel the pain and the weight of right. this, because this is not just a momentary thing. Right. This is something we're trying to see last and change. Yeah, no, yeah, I agree. Like, this is not a trend. This should not feel like a trend. This should feel like an ongoing battle and an ongoing, you know, race uh, almost for justice and equality and value of black lives. So I, I agree, everything you said, you know, uh, I feel like just with everything going on, there is that pressure to kind of slip into performance activism, which can be very tempting, right? Mm -hmm. But performance activism is very short lived, like he said, you know, mm -hmm. it's very fleeting. Yes, on the surface level, looks like you're doing something, but behind the scenes, you're just kind of like chilling, right? Mm -hmm. Performance activism can become this sort of mask that you can wear that looks pretty, but in, in essence, it's not fully, you know, delivering the results that we would actually need to tangibly live off of. So, um, yeah, I think that performance activism is something that we all have to question ourselves with, right? If everyone's posting something, do I have to post it to, to show this? Or do I have to do this? And of course, sometimes, you know, there is a place to share, like, yes, I am actively involved in something or a fight or, you know, a cause, right? Because silence also speaks volumes. But I think that it's always important to question your motives and to question yourself um, when you're doing these things, but not to, you know, make it such a critical thing or just, um, I guess, get wound up in the questioning, right? Don't get choked up by the questioning. Just ask yourself, 
why am I doing this? Or why do I feel the need to do this? Or right. am I doing this for other people's attentions? Or am I doing it because I, did, I generally care? Right. So right. that's just kind of my two cents with that. So the next one I'll jump to is um, why is it that Christian churches don't speak on racism? I would say the politics of all of it, but go ahead. Go ahead. Elaborate. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, I mean, I would say the politics of all of it. I think that racism and just like colorism and just different things in that category can come off being very liberal, you know? Um, and I think a lot of churches might lean more towards conservative. So they're, in their heads, it's more like we can't even discuss those things because if we do, it'll seem like we're going down the slippery slope into liberalism, which sucks, right? Because race should never be politicized. Race, race is a race, you know? Race should never become a political agenda or a political cause or means, right? Um, and it sucks that we do live in a world where people use it as a political weapon and people use it as a political vice to get what they want from other people. Um, so I think that some other ways in which the church, why they wouldn't speak on it is because they don't know how to speak on it. I think that a lot of churches wrestle with how much to say, what to say, even a knowing of what to say um, in terms of the language, the verbiage, not to continue to deepening the offenses or deepening the wrongdoing. So I think that there are lots of reasons which obviously don't excuse not speaking on it. I do think that the church does need to be on the front lines of deconstructing systemic racism, tearing down white supremacy, and, unif and uniting everyone because I feel like that's what God in his heart would want for us as a humankind, you know? Um, so it does suck that things have become so polarized in the church. And I think that there has been an awakening in a lot of churches realizing like, hey, this is serious. And if we love God, we can't not love our black brothers and sisters. If we love God, we can't not speak up. If we love God, we can't not advocate. And I think we're in a good place where we're finally getting that as a church. So that's awesome. Right. What yeah, would you say? Good. No, you said it, sis. But I'll just <laughs> add this. Um, fear is not of the spirit of God when it comes to using our voice to speak out against injustice. So every leader, pastor, I get it. I know there's some leaders out there. Who, who might lose half the congregation, who might lose their whole congregation mm -hmm. for speaking about these things. And I just ask that you count the cost. Like, as a, as a fellow leader in ministry, like, we signed up to count the cost, mm -hmm. you know? And not everything we say is gonna be liked or applauded, but I just think that we have a responsibility um, in the church, mm -hmm. not just leaders, actually everybody actually, mm -hmm. we have a responsibility to fight for justice because God does. Mm -hmm. He cares about it. He's fiercely committed to it. It's not just uh, 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 maybe I'll uh, kind of up and down with justice. Mm -hmm. You know, no, he's always, right. always about justice and he's always about mercy and grace. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you have to throw one away. Right. He just deeply cares about both things. He's committed to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, good answer. All right, so the next question says, what is the biggest mistake we can make as Christians during this time? Hmm. That's an interesting question. There's a lot of mistakes we can make. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the biggest one is. Uh, a couple that come to mind, or one that comes to mind, is um, kind of like what we just talked about, being silent mm -hmm. um, and just not using your voice like we're gonna look back in history and what will history say the people of God did were they were they on the sidelines again mm -hmm. or were they on the front lines uh, fighting for what what's on God's heart mm -hmm. you know and being a bridge and being unifiers and bringing just people of justice and love mm -hmm. um, so I, I think we we have to like find a way to use our voice and right. our platforms and whatever resources God has put in our hearts right. for this thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think the biggest thing would just be silent or to, yeah. to waste your gift. Right, right, yeah. One more thing. Um, the actual biggest tragedy, now I think about it, would be to walk away from Jesus in the midst of all this. Ooh. There's going to be a lot of things vying for your faith right. and, and for your belief. There's gonna be people saying like, your God doesn't care about right. this. There's gonna be people saying, you know, Christianity ain't the way to go. Mm -hmm. That's white man's religion. You might hear all kind right. of, all, all kind of things, but I would say the one thing, do not walk away from Jesus. Yeah. Don't turn from him. Right. I promise he's in there with you. Mm -hmm. uh, he's in there with all of us yeah. and he's uh, 
cares about it. Yeah. You know, and he's, he's one, he cares about us. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. So I would say, don't walk away from Jesus. Right. No matter what. Right. Yeah. Keep the faith alive. I agree. All right. So the next question says, how can I embrace conflict? with my white brothers and sisters on this issue. I think that this one is a really important one because for sure, not gonna lie, um, when all this was happening, I did, you know, start feeling like this bitterness was growing, right? Where it's like, why? Like, why does this keep happening? And why are white people doing this, right? It's easy to generalize. It's easy to just see, you know, it as a them versus us, but it's, it's really not all the time, right? Um, and I feel like with conflict or with discussing such a controversial topic such as racism um, in general, I think the important part is just to make sure you're having healthy dialogue. Um, so in that, you know, not all conflict is bad conflict, right? Um, just because, you know, you're having to feel uncomfortable in it or just because you're having to really, you know, think through and kind of maybe feel the intensity of the conversation does not mean it's bad at all. A lot of conflict is actually conducive if we allow it to be. So in that, I would just encourage you to walk into the conversation, right? Um, not with an agenda or not with a bias of the person that you're speaking with, right? You're going to want to make sure that you are open to hearing what they have to say and also open to sharing what you feel the Lord is leading you to say or what you've had on your heart that you want to, you know, kindly share with them. So. I think for me, it's open dialogue, you know, um, I have white friends who, you know, I have spoken to about the issue of race and kind of what's going on. And I don't feel like it's conflict when we speak on it. I feel like it's just them listening and then wanting to humbly learn on how to support me best in this season. So, um, yeah, I would just say um, that during the dialogue, just, you know, call it out for what it is if you hear it just be open to getting uncomfortable which you know this topic is very uncomfortable um but also pressing into that because i think that in those places that's where growth happens so let's talk about it right um and not just run away from it because of the conflict part of it so yeah i would add to that this is a very emotionally charged conversation that, like it, it really does like pull out our heartstrings in a lot of different ways but you know, when we're talking about these things, emotion is powerful and it can be used for good um, as we're trying to get our points across. Mm -hmm. But if we let emotions actually control us, then really the conversation doesn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, like it, it, it leads to more uh, misunderstanding a mm -hmm. lot of times. So I would just say if, if you are in a place where you're having a conversation with the white brother and sister and, and there is this inside of you like this emotional turmoil mm -hmm. i would just not throw it away but find a way to steward it and right. control it that's so good. that you can that's actually good. use it to your benefit mm -hmm. as you try to explain these things mm -hmm. to people and not just like because <laughs> it can feel like that sometimes yeah, again because you're so like frustrated yeah wow. like yeah that for me mm -hmm. but i've just found that it doesn't, doesn't help do help people yeah. and, and help the cause mm -hmm. so um, yeah yeah i love it steward steward your voice well steward your conversations well be open to expressing yourself, but just also learning how to, you know, find that balance and the boundary of, you know, also taking care of you and what you can mentally actually take on. I think sometimes we sign ourselves up for things that we don't actually want to. Like, I'm not going to go on the Facebook white supremacist Facebook page to argue. I'm not going to do that. I'm not. I'm just not. You know, that's not the conflict I'm going to go seek out. I rather have the conflict or the uncomfortability with a white brother or sister or a white friend or maybe a white neighbor than it would be a stranger on the internet. Right. So just choose and pick your battles because it's so important for your mental health. It's so important for using your energy and putting it towards things that are, are actually going to get the ball rolling and move it forward for good. Right. So yeah, Solid, that's, that's, thanks, good. Man. <laughs> that's just good. what I would say. All right, so the last one we're going to actually answer, not really, a, well, yeah, it's an answer, not really a question, but it's, I mean, yeah, it's a question. It a question. Yeah, okay, so the last one is an encouragement for my white brothers and sisters dealing with guilt and shame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a big one, too. That's a real thing, yo. That's a real thing. You want to get it first or you want me to? Go for it. All right, so that this is a real thing, like the, the guilt and shame piece when it comes to this conversation, well-meaning white mm -hmm. brothers and sisters who, who, who really do want to like 
you know, be a part and get it. But they're like, man, I'm white. I shame and guilt. Look, shame and guilt is not going to get you anywhere in this conversation. It's not helping anybody, actually, mm -hmm. when we're walking in guilt or shame. And that goes for everybody. Mm -hmm. That goes for everybody. Shame is not... Um, something that is a positive motivation mm -hmm. right. for us you mm -hmm. know it's a negative motivation and instead of actually helping like we do you know when we, when we do things out of like guilt right. yeah. if i do things because for for my wife because oh i feel guilty mm -hmm. so i gotta do this you know yeah she, she knows that she can see right through it and yeah. she's gonna call me out about it mm -hmm. you know but if i do something out of conviction you right. know like Man, these date nights, man, I'm convicted. I haven't I haven't been doing these date nights or planning these date nights like I know I should be. Let me let me go ahead and, and get things going on that. Let me start planning these things out ahead of time. Let me yeah. start choosing places. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a that's a conviction, right. you know, as opposed to uh, yeah. I, I, I really suck as a husband. I'm just the worst husband mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. and, everything about me it's just horrible yeah you know and that doesn't really actually honor her mm -hmm. or myself or how god has created me so um i just want to encourage if you're white listening to this um don't don't walk in that that's not for you mm -hmm. shame and guilt is not for you um, it's not your portion. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to be ashamed of your white skin. You don't have to be ashamed of even your white privilege. But you do have a responsibility to use it. You do have a responsibility to um, steward right. your whiteness right. um, for the advancement of God's work. Yeah, yeah, period. Um, period. Period. <laughs> I would just throw in there um, that, you know, those two words, guilt and shame. When I think of those words, I think of what comes after that or the behavior that might come from that, right? And that could look like defensiveness. So if you're walking in guilt and shame, you're also probably walking in defensiveness and not wanting to acknowledge or fully, you know, engage with uncomfortable topics or situations because you'd feel like you already feel shame for it. So you're gonna to wanna to defend yourself to prove that you are capable, that you are able, that you are worthy. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of this reverse psychology going on here. So um, you don't want to make yourself crippled with guilt and shame because it won't allow you to actually add to the healthy, much needed dialogue and much needed work that's required of all of us during this time. So um, guilt and shame, like Yinka said, is not what, you know, we are wanting you to walk in. We are wanting you to walk in, whether it be repentance, if that's what you're needing to do, remorse, if you've, you know, maybe added or, you know, you know, been a part of systems that do oppress um, people of color or just black people in general. Um, so there are different steps to take. Those don't require shame or guilt. Um, it more so require lament you know, repentance, remorse, um, truth telling, confession maybe, you know, um, things like that, action, behavior steps, just things that are gonna move us forward that are more conducive and productive for the movement or for just us unifying as a people. Um, so yeah. That's There's this verse in the Bible that talks about this very idea that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And basically it's worldly grief or worldly sorrow, AKA shame, it, it leads to sin, mm -hmm. um, it leads to shame, but godly grief, like when you, you have a godly grief inside of you, that mm -hmm. actually leads to repentance, mm -hmm. which leads to righteousness. Mm -hmm. So if you're walking in that again, that, that, that's not going to lead you to God's best for mm -hmm. you or for those around you or for those you want to fight for. Mm -hmm. It just won't. But if you have a godly grief inside of you, like, man, my heart breaks. Mm -hmm. Man, I've been a part, I've been complicit in a system right. that has hurt a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I just repent for the ways I've been complicit with it. Even if it was, slavery was your great great mm -hmm. you know great grandma and grandpa mm -hmm. you know there's still a repentance right. that can take place for just again being complicit with those mm -hmm. things even though you might not have come done a racist act in your entire life right you know when we're talking about systemic racism mm -hmm. we're not just talking about individual acts of racism we're talking about a system right that's been built over centuries centuries, yeah. centuries mm -hmm. so yeah and for those who are logging on to this and are not 
maybe a believer or a Christian, um, repentance just basically means to turn, right? right? To turn around, to turn away from um, and towards um, whatever the opposite of what you were doing or the right. sin you were in or, you know, acting on um, from. So just a turn, just a turn from it, um, a change from it. And that's what it would look like, right? To turn away from um, feeding into acts of oppression um, or just systems that would, would put others down. So, um, yeah. Well, whew, we... preach on that. That's the word, that's the word <laughs> right there. Turn. Repent. Turn. Turn. LOL. But anyways, y'all, we are going to go ahead and wrap this video up. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Um, leave some comments below. How are you feeling right now? What are your thoughts on some of the questions that we answered? What are your answers for some of the questions that we answered? Um, and yeah, just feel free to uh, subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this video. Follow us on Insta if you want to. And uh, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Peace.